Hello and welcome back to another episode of Sir Yaml, it's Byron speaking. In the previous episode we have um, accomplished something and that's something I I rarely if ever said in this project so far uh, because we have actually set up the foundation for our test cases here, the first part. Uh, the first part in basically includes uh, our ability to uh, generate a uh, structures module which um yeah actually i'm thinking you know we want to use everything here huh? like that i think that works anyway uh we, we have the structures module which is actually generated because we have um an input structure that we just define like this and what we are interested in is to get uh, the implementation for the serialization and deserialization calls uh, automatically. And this is done using syntax. Syntax is the way to use if you want to use stable, uh, the stable compiler, along with custom derives, because this one basically generates the code that would otherwise be added only at compile time. In a way, it's a good thing, because we now will use or will use the time necessary. Uh, to build stuff only once, or uh, to generate this code only once, right? This costs CPU time. And right now it's only used once, which is when we generate this code and then it will be just, you know, handled as normal code. Also, we, we kind of see what actually is going on under the hood, which will probably help when trying to implement this correctly, right? Because we have to interact uh, with this code, because this code here makes the calls to the serializer, uh, serializer, to the visitor of whatever. And yeah, that's how that will work. Awesome. Uh, however that works, right? I, I didn't really look into it yet. I have a, a basic idea of what it does, but I have no thorough understanding of that yet. Um, yeah, but in the end, we will have a fixed version of this because there needs to be some final replays on it to be ex uh, to be code that actually compiles. Okay, but yeah, that's that's how that is. You know, there, there's nothing more to it. And then we just uh, pull this structure or pull this uh, module in and are able to use the, the data accordingly. Uh, what we try to do here is to just serialize it and compare it with a result. And in this session, we want to generate this uh, expected structure and we want to let it generate uh, by an existing YAML parser. So the idea is similar to a bootstrapping process um, because we can either make up how the structure should look like or we use an existing compiler as our, our existing YAML serializer as our reference implementation and let it generate the stuff that we want. And that's how that should should work, you know. And I just made this up. This might change at all, at any time, but it kind of gives me gives me an idea of what I want to probably have. This is totally made up, and I will see how that actually comes out once I do it. And I would like to use Python for this. And uh, I think all we need to do is to first check if Python comes with a YAML parser. Python YAML, if that is built in or not, because yeah, it seems to be separate, huh? How can I parse YAML files? So do you need to import it? Without relying on C headers is PyYAML. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But does it mean it, it comes with the standard library of Python or not? Uh, probably not. Yeah, PyAML. I guess. I guess it's separate, huh? Uh, I should still have it here. So this comes from site packages YAML. I might have installed it. Uh, but if so, there should be some YAML egg info, shouldn't there be? like here. So maybe it's part of the standard implementation. Yeah, let's figure that out first. I guess I'm um, spinning up a virtual machine that is blank. Uh, for instance, CentOS is, has old stuff on it all the time. <laughs> it's really like four years or five years behind usually, uh, but it's highly stable. 
this is the whole idea. So if I spin this one up, uh, and if that Python installation has YAML by default, then I'm quite confident that y some YAML implementation is available um, in the standard library of Python. Here we go. Yeah, come on. How can I? Oh yeah, there. There we go. That's how that goes. Python. What do we have? Python two six. See, so really old. I don't think I have IPython here. Oh, I do. Fine. This could mean I haven't. Okay, it doesn't work. Fine. And I take Python import YAML. Cool. So YAML is not there by default. Um, that tells me what I wanted to know. So we cannot assume it, but this should work for everybody. So again, I guess I will just look at Google RS here and do this virtual and stuff here. So let's see, VN, I will just put it there. Virtual and virtualenv.py. Did I add this? Is this is this added? Where is this coming from? That's the question. Did I add this or not? Let's have a look. I might have added this. Here's Google RS. Get ls files, grab virtua. Let's try that again, virtua. Oh, look. So it's not part of that. So how do I generate this? VN. Ah, see, so here's where I, where I download it and install it into the virtua and folder. OK, that's cool. So I want this and I want this kind of, and then I will make up the rest myself. W get is required then, but that should be good enough. So once again, you know, I'm, I'm not even trying to make my stuff compatible with Windows anymore just because <laughs> it's ridiculous to try that because Windows has nothing that you would usually expect on a standard Unix and yeah, I'm not dealing with that anymore. That's just how it is. So if you want to build this, you better spin up a Virtual machine that gives you some more or less decent Linux slash Unix some something that is not Windows basically. So uh, we'll take this and enter Sir YAML again. Have a look at our make file here and just stupidly add this virtual env. <sighs> yeah, here we kind of repeat ourselves, but I think. That's also that's also okay. Mm. That's all right. Vn Shelby. Oh yeah, how is how is that working? I think that's there's a difference. This is I think um, delayed or lazy substitution, and this is immediate substitution, or the other way around. I always forget. Anyway, so that's uh, supposed to be uh, virtua env. Virtua env, right? Something like that. Maybe dot pi. Um, yeah, I think it depends on what, what I extract here. So I might wanna might wanna do it like that. Just to look it up one more time. So that is virtualenv.py, that is true. Vnf dear, I guess I wanna have this as well. And this I wanna have too, and this I wanna have too, because we need pip for that. I think that's the variables I really need. And that's that's all. Uh, YAML. Let's put it separate it a little bit. Okay, so here I should now have everything I need. I've pip, vnf, dear. Awesome. 
So Python 2.7 is actually not existing everywhere, but also Python 2.6 is not existing anywhere anymore. So yeah, that's something we just go going to have to live with. Uh, the cool thing is that now I can use I can use Python here and have it install itself automatically. So make docs I don't need, Mako I don't need. Even though having Mako would possibly be interesting. But I think for the code generation that I will require, uh, I'm fine with just having a simple Python script that just dumps. You know, makes no difference to me. I'll just dump this to SD out and make it work that way. Yeah, fine. Um, fixtures, I think, so now we have Python available. We can now write and execute Python scripts. That's the kind of idea here. So I guess I wanna have fixtures and, um, you know, have some sort of generator that generates my uh, serial, serialization wanted data structures. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what I would expect here. Let's call it Sergen. <laughs> oh no, wait. First, you want a new folder, fixtures. <sighs> I'm not sure. Uh, I could also just dump the file in there, the Python file, sergen.py. Why not? Let's, let's not exaggerate here, because this has to generate a file at some point that we also want to wanna use. It's supposed to be a module. Sir, let's call it Sir again and Sir data, or Sir want. So Sir want will contain the the constants of the data structures that we expect, and Sir again will be the generator for this. We just dump it, dump it in the root, and it's all brought together by the make file. Then I think that that's sufficiently easy. Uh, excuse, folder. Oh no, I don't want a folder. I was still in folder generation mode. Cool, that's file generation mode, sergen.py. There we go. And uh, yeah, now I can just say that sir data, so it's tests, sir data.rs will depend on tests surgen.py and can be created using Python. And then we just execute the one input file we have and dump it to the one output file we have because that's supposed to just write stuff to std out. Cool. And now if I wanna set up the fixtures I can now add my sir data here as well, which should set itself up accordingly. So if we execute this now, um, make fixtures, we should get a full installation of, <laughs> the virtual environment. But we do not, because it didn't, oh, the Python, no, wait, the Python target I have. Oh, but we depend on Python. Maybe this is something I should also add here. Ah, yeah, there we go. And now we set up virtual environment, we set up pib, we set up pyyaml, and successfully created our sir data rs, which right now is totally empty. Cool. And I think we don't need much. All we want to do now is to have a Python script that dumps this kind of data <laughs> in, um, well, it dumps this kind of data to std out in the form that can be handled. So yeah, let's have sir again. I will take it on that side that I don't need right now. In, I also don't need out. I definitely don't need, don't need, don't need. There we go, that's much simpler now, that's how I like it. The tests I might take, actually to the left side, yeah, that's where I want it. Cool, so that seems to work. 
If I make fixtures again, it should do nothing. That's co correct. But if I change this one, it should try something. Good. Oops. That is fine. Awesome. So now about the implementation. <laughs> How was it again? If name equals main. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't like Python. <laughs> but what can I say? I, I, I know it good enough to do stuff in it, and that's just it. But it's a, it's a hate-love relationship in that order. Um, yeah, so here we have our main implementation. Uh, let's say raise assertion error cannot be used as library. Yeah, that is that. And here, all I want to do is put data structures and pass them to std out. So import sys, and then I would like to have a function that write const rs that writes some some uh, Rust compatible constant. Write const string rs. I'm quite of Kind kind of verbose, considering that this is the only thing we will ever do. And what we take is a stream to write to, and then the constant name, and the data. And the data is what we will serialize. And I think then it's really just, just like this, stream write const, then the name of the thing shall be static string equals, and we put it onto the next line then, like this. And here we go with const name upper. Is it upper or two upper? I don't know, I could just find out. I think it could be upper. Yes, it's upper, okay. Oh yeah, so we write this. And then on the on the next line, we can now use YAML. Import YAML, and this will, I think, even use the C implementation here, because we we successfully installed this thing. Uh, but that should make a difference. Probably using lib YAML as a reference is even better than using the pure Python one. We might still use the pure Python one, the code, just to see how it's supposed to be implemented if we, we happen to get into trouble or if we want to do that. But for now, I think for, for getting the reference stuff, we will be good doing it just like that. Okay, so in theory, all we have to do is do our blah, and then we have a pretty printed string that we dump right here. And then we terminate this. Oh yeah, let's do it like that, like that, like that, like that. And this should be, oops. And this should be it really, right? Oh yeah, and not to forget, semicolon. And that's really all we have to do. That should totally work for us. Could also do it like this to be a bit more, uh, a bit safer. I think, yeah, but that is that is that. Cool, so that will already do what we wanna do. And we might wanna put a few new lines there just to make sure it's separated from the next one that comes or doesn't come. And now we write const string, um, sys std out. Uh, well, let's call it data one. I don't know if I want to do it. Call it data one default. I call it data one, right? Because oh no, wait, data one default because it's it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have any value really. It's just uh, the default one, so it's all zeros and stuff. And now we have to uh, build that data structure in Python, and we can do this in line, I suppose and say, well, it's i60 or i32. Oh, wait, I have to do, I have to use strings here, unfortunately. Unless we use a different style. I think I want to use a different style. Let's do it like this. 
No. Like that. So now we can use i32 equals. And that's, I think, much nicer. Equals 0, then i64 equals 0. U32 equals 0. And now I'm getting lazy already. F32 equals 0, 0.0. F64 equals 0, 0.0. So for Python, this doesn't necessarily make sense, right? Because we don't even have these data types. Um, string is an empty string. I32A shall be an empty array. We don't really specify that it's a string array, but you know, this one doesn't doesn't necessarily care here. It's just empty. And then, oh yeah, there's a command missing. And then we have a hash, uh, which is just an empty dict here. And that's it, that's the data structure. Data one default. Data one default, that's the name of the constant. And that is that, so now we should already so um, data should already get something that makes sense here. If we make fixtures again, kinda, except for the fact that we don't actually substitute substitute this with YAML dump or something. Yeah, so um, there is obviously a way to pretty print this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's dump, but I don't know so well about. So give me some dump example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, that already kind of works. So I guess I don't have to specify anything. Let's let's try YAML dump. Oh, and that's creating a string, does it? which should also be fine for what we want here. So I think all I get, all I have to do is put in this data. And there we go. So what do you say about that? Yeah, looks good. Oh, of course the order is undefined, damn it. Ah, no. Yeah, that's the order dict mess up. So the problem is that with each generation, it might actually change. And this is uh, terrible, because that would mean, yeah, what, what about the order here? What does the thing say? Order, keys order. That makes it difficult. So you would have to sort this first somehow. Do not have, in the representation model, mapping keys do not have any order. To serialize a mapping, it is necessary to impose ordering on its keys. This order is a serialization detail and should not be used when composing the representation graph, and hence for preservation of application data. In every case where node order is significant, a sequence must be used. Okay, for example, an ordered mapping can be represented as a sequence of mappings where each mapping is a single key value, single value pair. Yeah. Then it provides a convenient compact notation for this case. Yeah, well, uh, so it's good that it, this is undefined, but it's bad for us. Uh, the problem is, in order to get an order in there, I would have to deserialize this. <laughs> ah, shoot. So I wonder, if I use an order dict here, uh, Python 2.7 order dict, Python 2.7 order dict. So what happens then? Does it work? I mean, is the order preserved then? <sighs> order dict. Items. So items, that's a tuple of key value pairs. Let's try it. 
from collections import order dict here we go and yeah i shall just keep it like that uh, oops and using order dict instead now we pass in a tuple of items like this. Oh, come on. No, I lost track. I hated that sublime text is too dumb to have the multi-line parentheses uh, right to get them right. Yeah, so that's now the order dict, that's the tuple. And now we have to, we could possibly use some neat multi-line editing here. Like this, one to the left, yes. Kinda. Well, now we lose it. Because that's not supposed to be a comma. But maybe an equal sign here. Can I just match within selection? Yeah, this works now. I made bad experiences with find and selection. How do I enable this quickly? Huh. Oh look, so it doesn't have a hotkey assigned. Fine, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, now we have it and we wanna change this with a comma. Good, so that's my order dict. So now the ordering is correct and it doesn't like it though. Why does it not like it? What's your problem, man? Yeah, if I compile this, probably I will get some some ridiculous syntax error because the Python parser is just annoyingly bad when it comes to telling you what it doesn't like. Yeah, to me this still looks good. I don't see it. What does it say here? Yeah, let's just try it. Invalid syntax. Thank you very much for such a descriptive piece of information oh probably probably it doesn't close oh yeah now all this wants to be but we might be able to use multi-line editing here there we go good so that's better cool so let's see if that kept oh what But it's an order dict of items. Apparently not. So it kept. Oh, so that's okay. So it has a different notation for order dicts, I suppose. The thing is, you can patch up YAML to use order dicts instead. <sighs> and I think I do this in B core somewhere so i i b core comes with the pure yaml implementation import yeah why why do i not find it yeah that's yaml files i want Import YAML. Let's try to find that. Because somewhere I, I patch it up to work for me. Ah, that might actually be here. Possibly. Let's hope let's, uh, let's hope so. Persistence, initialize YAML overrides. Yes, initialize YAML overrides. That's the one. Add representer. Represent order dict. Oh shit. And that's where it gets a bit more complicated. Because now you have to kind of copy all this code to make it work. Yeah, so that's basically the code I now need. Uh, I wonder, can I just use, can I just install B core 
and then use this because this YAML override stuff, it adds it to the global instance, right? And it deals with C loaders and loaders. So in theory, that works. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try to use BK vStore here. So we pull in B and we have a setup.py, see? So apparently that exists on uh, on pip. So we can easily install it. So we can pip install it. Let's try that. So here we have the make file. Oh yeah, and let's make it dependent on our make file, right? Just to be sure, even though I don't know if that's the right thing to do. No, let's not do that. Let's see. And now I think it's also time for make clean. I know that we have that many things that we install here. Pip install and then bcore we want two. Let's see if that changes anything. Uh, also now import bkv store. This should set up the YAML overrides. This is also something it can't do anymore because uh, it doesn't have the Python path set accordingly. So my linter doesn't like it, even though the program later will like it because it uses a properly configured Python interpreter here, Python environment. Yeah, so let's try that. Make fixtures, that should not work because it has to reinstall everything. Okay, so we want to kill the virtua env, v env dear. That's what we want to remove. And I think with that, kind of everything goes away. And the v env here, and virtua env. So this virtua env installation, I think we don't need to kill that. But we could even though I don't see the need to reinstall this all the time. So I guess we for now will be happy with just the VNF deer here. And that will basically trigger a rebuild anyway. So yeah, let's make clean. And now, oh yeah, and also the git ignore should ignore the pi env, how do we call it? Pi env something. <laughs> And what else? Probably I want to ignore this here as well. Photo exclude patterns, pi and this. Okay. And the virtual and stuff as well. Like this. So that's better. But that's just the basic setup anyway. Uh, Oh yeah, and virtual and we want to ignore two. So there we go. Just to be sure we don't accidentally edit. So make fixtures should now reinstall itself. Should pull B core. Oh no, what B core? It's not there. But I thought it is. Did I not? Did I not edit? Pi, pi, we are 33 minutes in. I thought I edited it. Oh man, I dropped my, my login again and just, I hope this just works. Oh. Oh man, fucking pi, pi. <laughs> PyPy is always out of date. So this means I don't get into my PyPy stuff anymore. I can't update this anymore. Well. I can't, I can't update this. This means I lost my access to PyPy for good now. Because I don't have a separate account here. And yeah, I don't know. 
Pi Pi is just the worst thing ever. Honestly, I hated it from the very beginning. Look at this. This is Apache authentication. You know, they don't even have a real authentication scheme here. Oh my. Fuck you. F you. Open ID. Did you know that this has been disabled? Probably you have been informed about that because Google wouldn't just turn it off. They give you a grace period of probably like half a year or something and you didn't do shit to make this work. Well, thanks for nothing. Hate, hate you. Okay, so Pip, I think, <laughs> I think uh, with Pip, I can also install from Git. So I should be able to, to do that. Uh, let's try that. Just to get the YAML order dict going, right? But I need it, I need ordering. Otherwise I'm dead in the water. Ah, <sighs> fuck. So pip install from git. It does, I know this works, so let's make it work. Pip install from git, see? GitHub, there we go. Git plus H Git plus HTTPS, I think, will will do the job as well. Yeah, let's try that. GitHub B core. All right, let's try that. So py yaml and then we do pip install. Oops. And it's just uh, the URL, right? That matters here. Yeah. So it's git plus this, I think. So let's see if that works. Make fixtures. Uh, yeah. Make clean and try again. So that is YAML. I might actually wanna put this first just because that's what we are testing right now. Oh, look, it does something, cool. Yeah, and it ran. Cool, so in theory, we might have, uh, no, that's still an ordered dict, unfortunately. I think the dicts are ordered by default now or something, but only when they're read, when they're read. Um, so this might still be, yeah, let's, let's just verify this. Oh, damn it. Because I think once we load stuff, uh, let, or let's have a look. I, I don't know if that actually ran this code. Um, if we import BKV store, I think this will happen automatically. Yeah, that's part of the initialization. And that's what we do, right? So we get it, we set it up, and this works for order dict and dict objects. <sighs> so dict objects, they're not by default. Yeah, I think this only is relevant if it deserializes things. And audit dict representer, that's supposed to be relevant when serializing. But this doesn't seem to work. <sighs> see, so this actually should prevent the stuff from happening that we see here, that it uses a custom data type. Um, YAML. Maybe maybe it's no, but it it's adding this to the global instance, right? So that should work. Did it actually regenerate this? Did it? Uh, well, let's change this one here. Yeah, it does, but it doesn't do it the way I expect here. So this representer stuff doesn't seem to get in pi and Darwin. Let's have a look at the code side side packages. B 
KV store. Here we go. So persistence, right? So here we could just put in an assert false. And it should now fail. Oops. Okay, it doesn't fail. This means the persistence stuff is not actually initialized. Why would that be? I'm on the wrong track here. That's in BKV store. And persistence is automatically initialized, I thought. In it, YAML persistence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in any way, this will fail. Does it use its own version? If I have this zip file that I ship with? So this should not happen either. Oh, damn it. I can. I can force it, right? Always make or something. Where is that? Keep going. Ah, <sighs> where's always make? Always make. B. Clear, huh? B. Oh no, it does everything now. No. <laughs> Terrible. Well, as long as it works, I'm quite amazed that this actually works. Yeah, that's that takes too long. I don't want that. Good. So yeah, this doesn't even seem to to run. I don't get any. Oh, I know what's happening. Possibly. No, actually, that shouldn't be happening. Or do I have some Python pass set? Oops. No, I don't. Yeah, let's let's try that. Pi. Pi and Darwin bin Python import bkv store. So where is that coming from now? bkv store. It's coming from here. Okay, so this means the standard YAML import works. Import YAML. Yeah, standard side packages. Maybe there's a bug in here. Initialize YAML overrides. Uh, maybe it's just this represent order dict stuff that doesn't actually run. Well, it does run. Assert false. So now this should fail somewhere, should it? Oh, and I have to be careful. I put all these assertions in. Probably I should just clean it and retry once I'm sure what's happening here. Um, anyway, so that's supposed to be okay. We import it, so that should run. Make fixtures. Okay, so it does run, but it doesn't have any effect, unfortunately. Is there something special that we have to do? So I think that's not relevant here. This is call, that's fine. So we are just looking at this thing. So this is set up actually. Import YAML, YAML constructor, YAML C loader. So maybe there is some sort of, you know, maybe we get, get in here, maybe we should raise. Maybe there is a difference. We use the C loader, but I think we use the loader or something. <sighs> assert false initialized YAML overrides 44. I might have left some assertion in there. Yes. So also this doesn't happen. So we get we get the C loader, but also the loader, right? It's only no. Actually, this is. I think this is what's relevant to the serialization part, to the dump part. So the YAML loader here, it will make sure 
that all mappings are actually ordered dicts when loaded. That's cool. Uh, actually, we don't care about that here, but still. But the representer it makes sure that we only get a standard mapping. This is kind of the part here. Represent dict object, represent ordered dict, see? So it's both a map. So is this actually called? Probably not. Apparently not. Maybe maybe there are some incompatible versions or something. But you know what? We might just use our built-in version then. If we have if we use B core now, we, then we might just not need PyAML. Uh, because it comes with a pure Python version where this stuff actually works here. Um, yeah, I will just remove this anyway. Start data RS. Um, make clean. And now we try that again. Okay, now we get Bcore, with, which comes with YAML. And now it uses its own built-in YAML, that's for sure, but it still doesn't work. Why is that? Damn it. Yeah, so what kind of YAML do we get now? Let's see. Uh, pi and bin Python, import YAML shouldn't work. Input bkv store, and now import yaml should work because this is now the one we get from the zip file here. All right, and this one should now have been patched to the point where it deals with ordered dictionaries correctly. Maybe the contents of the ordered dict is wrong or something. Oh, this this used to work. You know, I'm not supposed to spend any time on this really because. Oh. It's just standard stuff that I used a trillion times before. But usually with dict objects, which uh, tend to be ordered as well, are they? I don't know. I don't want to use dict objects here, though. But I might if it maintains the order, which I think it does not. So this looks more like, yeah, like the internal representation of that thing. Or the audit dict has been has not been created properly. Maybe the contents of the audit dict is kind of wrong here. If I would make this a dict though, it would work correctly, right? Uh, see, even though the ordering then gets lost. So I would expect the same constructor to work for the audit dict. Python ordered dict, there we go, Python 2.7, collections, ordered dict, items. Maybe it wants to have a, a list of items or something. Can, can do. There you go. Well, still the same. <sighs> so the representer stuff simply doesn't work. <sighs> because this one here, how, how do I do this mapping? OMAP. Add constructor. And where does the representer come into play? And where do we have the audit dict from? B utility. Okay, so maybe I want to use B utility then. Then this works. Yeah, that could be it. Let's use the B. Let's fully embrace the B core stuff then. B utility import audit dict because that kind of has a platform compatible implementation of audit dict. So possibly that will do 
better. B B utility utility now maybe. <laughs> nice. All right. Look at this. The order has been maintained. Yeah, awesome. So it's really about the type here that well, has to match. And I'm not sure if I then will need this. Let's see. Maybe I can do without. No. BKV store uh, provides YAML. Yeah, so that is that. Cool. So now we have a proper audit listing here of our keys. And this is something we can now just import here into our test case, right? So we say mod sir data. And then we have sir data, data one default. And I think it wants to be pub as well. Uh, but we will see cargo test. <laughs> oh yeah, my bad. What's missing? Well, this is missing at the very least. Maybe you have to make it pub too, but let's wait for it. Make fixtures, make tests. See, I have to make it pub. I knew it. Make fixtures, make tests. You know what? I think I want to have a make test then. If I say it all the time, it kind of makes sense. Test is cargo test, that's all. Cool. Yeah, what I don't like is the way the comparison works here. Assert equal doesn't really work well with uh, strings. So kind of debugging this visually is not working working nicely. So what, what happens? What, what do we get, by the way? I didn't really look at it. Yeah. Okay, so it uses single quotes. And the rest was kind of the way we expected it to be. That's good. Cool. But we don't get that at all. Uh, the order, I think we will keep, right? Um, because this is always done in order, in the order of the actual fields. I think that is maintained. Um, can I just print this? Does this work? No, uh, the printing also looks ugly. I don't know if there's a way to just print it in plain text. Oh, there we go. That's how that works. Cool. I think that's that's a way to debug this. And uh, yeah, now we have a handle. Look at that. The order does match string i32a hash. Cool. So we are actually quite close already. Just drop the comma. <laughs> Uh, I have to drop the comma and um, the stuff around it. I think this is not this is something we don't output ourselves. That's not part of the string. If you give it a new line here, it should look better. Yeah, so this is actually the output that we that we get here. And uh, this is now we have something to work with. Now we can actually get this to work, which I think should still be relatively simple because it's just a serialization, even though uh, we will have other test cases that shall uh, be more complex, I think. Mm, just because I want to see how the serializer deals with multi line strings and stuff like that would be interesting to see. And we will just emulate that output. Uh, nothing special to be done here for now, uh, but that's also st uh, stuff we do in uh, other sessions um, as well. So, yeah, I think what we could do is, while we are testing this, have, and now we go with want, sir data 
data one to false. Want and now we can visually debug this and the the assertion that fails we just ignore, right? Because now we can easily see what's going on and what's possibly wrong here and to be fixed. So that's nice. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, our editor, our editor looks good. Git also looks good because the git ignore has been fixed. So data we want, so again we want. And the git ignore stuff, yes, 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 yes. Cool. So we now have successfully outsourced the generation of the one strings to an existing and supposedly working YAML implementation. So we don't have to make stuff up. We also don't have to read read this document all the time, um, which will be very, very interesting for deserialization. This is where where will where it will come in handy. Um, yeah. And also where the data structures will be totally handy because each of these things here, we might want to, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do it, actually. We will think about it once we are there. There might be some generic way to store the YAML file, like a YAML value, similar to the JSON value that we have. And yeah, stuff like that will happen. Cool. Um, let's make a commit here. That is that. Looks looks good. Not much happened here. Some research done. Uh, it's a, is it an improvement? Chore tests. Python generates want strings. The strings we expect from a YAML YAML dump operation are now generated by a pure Python and supposedly supposedly working supposedly working implementation that we install using a Python virtual <clears throat> environment. That way we leave nothing nothing to chance. Oh yeah, I think I should also remove this one here now that I'm at it. Leave nothing to chance and make results reproduce uh, that is good. I like it. I like that very much. And that's kind of the foundation for, for a lot more to come here. That's just the first kind of simple data structure that we want to serialize to see what's what's happening here. Yeah, it looks, looks totally fine. I'm happy with that. Let's add info. Import needed to get YAML into the global global namespace like that and like this. And I think that also fixes this basic setup for serialization testing because now we can actually do stuff. Nice, I like it. Um, yeah, so related. I would want to say closes that, but I can't close a. You know what? I can say closes. Closes one because that's related ticket here, and once I merge this in, I think we shall be fine. Yeah, I think that could be it. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Looks good. I can push this. Mine master. Oh, and I also forgot to start the upload here, which shall be none of your concern, but I have to kind of use my bandwidth efficiently. 
So that's the last video here and the current one will be processed next. So that's cool. Now this goes in and is being tested. Probably the, the testing stuff always fails here, but we will see. We'll see about that. I don't know. I will have to check this at some point because the test should actually work. And I'm not totally sure why they always failed here. Maybe I want to have a look at them. Nope. Not like that. Like, where's the link? The link should be that one here, huh? See? Just want to have a quick look at it. Oh, look, it's already doing stuff. Wow, and it's actually compiling things as well. I'm amazed. Yeah, because I checked in everything that's relevant to the test stuff, I guess chances are that this actually works because we use a uh, we use stable here. We are not depending on the build script anymore, even though it will run. We don't really care about it because the in and out files are not directly used. So, yeah, if it runs or not doesn't matter. Should at least not make it fail. Okay, I think that's, you know, I will have a look at this and see what happens. Um, so that's the conclusion of this uh, PR, I guess. So thanks for watching and have a great day.